Welcome back. In this lesson we will learn about the bias in the fission source in Monte Carlo criticality simulations. In the previous lesson we have studied the convergence of the fission source in criticality simulations and the important result that we obtained was that the error was dominated by the decay of the first higher eigenmode in the fission source. And this decay was uh, given by the dominance ratio. So if we denote the error in the efficient source as epsilon, let's denote the error in the cycle n in the efficient source as epsilon n. So the error approximately was given by the ratio k1 over k0 to the power of n. So this is the rate at which the main contribution to the error in the efficient source decays. And we call this ratio k1 over k0 the dominance ratio. Now in the derivation of this result we have used this equation, the formula for uh, iterating the efficient source over the criticality cycles. And we have made the assumption that uh, there is equal sign here. That means that we are not introducing any random noise into the efficient source at every cycle, which is not really true. During the Monte Carlo criticality simulation, uh, the efficient source is mixed with random noise. That's because it is sampled by a limited number of neutron histories. So let's say that we simulate m neutron histories in one cycle. So then it means that we sample the efficient source at m sites in the whole space of the system. There are only m sites, m fission neutrons per cycle. Now the distribution of the fission neutrons is very much dependent on the random numbers that we generate in order to sample the neutron histories in that particular cycle. And if we use different random numbers, then we will collect a little bit different fission neutrons. So uh, there is some random noise in the selection of the fission neutrons in every cycle. You need to realize that in this equation the H operator, the fission operator, will give us the expected distribution of the next generation fission source and we will use this distribution to select only several points. So we will use this distribution to generate random variables, the fission neutrons, and we will select only M neutrons. And the fission source is a random variable and uh, since it is sampled by a limited number of sites we know that it contains a statistical error in which we know is of the order 1 over the square root of the number of neutrons that we sample in the fission source. Now the presence of this random noise has some consequence on the convergence of the efficient source. So when you look at this uh, simplified uh, formula for the convergence of the efficient source, there will be some effect to this. The efficient source in the Monte Carlo simulation will not converge exactly according to this formula. There will be some deviations to it. Let me rewrite the equation here. Epsilon in cycle n, the error of the efficient source converges approximately as the dominance ratio to the power of n. Now we can try to display this convergence in the plot. It will be better to use the logarithmic scale because we have this n exponent. So let's take the logarithm of this formula, logarithm of the epsilon, 
logarithm of the dominance ratio. So I can take the exponent out from the logarithm in front. So here we can see that this number is negative because k1 over k0 is uh, smaller than 1. It may be close to 1 but it's smaller than 1 and logarithm of a number which is smaller than 1 is negative. So uh, we can see if we write the convergence in the plot in which we have number of cycles here and on the vertical axis we have the logarithm of the error in the efficient source we can display this convergence in this way so this straight line represents the convergence according to this equation however we know that the equation is not reflecting exactly the Monte Carlo simulation it does not uh, assume the presence of the random noise in the efficient source so at every cycle the efficient source is mixed with uh, new random noise and as a consequence of this the convergence of the Monte Carlo efficient source differs to this straight line so if we start at the same position it may uh, converge like this sometimes the random noise may uh, uh, increase the error in the fission source uh, but uh, at some cycles the random noise can actually uh, reduce the error in the fission source so this is just by chance uh, however the convergence rate um, we may expect to be approximately the same so if we repeat the Monte Carlo simulation with uh, other set of uh, random numbers uh, we may obtain uh, for instance something like this right so if we repeat over and over the simulation with different random numbers uh, we will observe that the efficient source will converge uh, however there will be moments like here when uh, over a number of cycles the error in the efficient source will grow over the cycles and there will be moments when the efficient source will converge at a faster rate than what is suggested by uh, this equation Right. So, for instance, here you can see that the Monte Carlo efficient source converges actually faster than uh, what we would expect according to uh, our result from the previous lesson. So, that's all because of the uh, random noise that is introduced in the efficient source at every cycle. However, the somewhat chaotic convergence of the efficient source is only one part of the problem. There is another problem. You see, at every cycle, a uh, random noise is introduced into the efficient source, and this random noise propagates into the successive cycles in which the error decays cycle by cycle. However, a new random noise is mixed into the efficient source again at every cycle. And the consequence of this error propagation over the cycles and mixing with new random noise is that the Monte Carlo efficient source does not converge to the fundamental mode but to a biased distribution uh, that I denote as S0M because it depends on the neutron batch size, the number of uh, fission neutrons. Uh, we know that the smaller the value of M is, the, the fewer fission neutrons uh, that we simulate, the larger is the bias in the fission source. So the, we know that the difference between the biased fission source uh, 
and the correct fundamental mode and distribution is of the order 1 over m. So uh, if you increase the number of neutron histories per cycle 10 times, you will reduce the bias in the fission source 10 times approximately. Now you may wonder how the biased fission source looks like. I have some uh, examples here for the slab reactor. In the slab system we have the correct fundamental mode displayed by this black line. So it's the cosine-like uh, distribution for fission neutrons. Now this fundamental mode is actually calculated by the actual Monte Carlo simulation in which I used quite large number of neutrons per cycle, 10,000 neutrons per cycle. So the fission source is composed of 10,000 neutrons. Now look what happens when you reduce the number of neutrons in the fission source to only 10, only 10 neutrons per cycle. So that is displayed by this blue distribution. You can see that there is a big bias in it. It's uh, flattened, right? So uh, if you set only 10 neutrons per cycle, the fission source will converge to this biased distribution. And it doesn't matter how many cycles you simulate in your simulation. You can simulate trillions of cycles and all your results will be biased according to this fission source distribution. If you increase the batch size to 100, 100 neutrons per cycle, you can see that the bias is reduced. So the distribution is displayed by this orange uh, line. Uh, it is reduced, but uh, still it's quite considerable bias in it. If we increase the batch size to 1000, you can see that uh, the bias is reduced even more. And it's very similar to the correct fundamental mode. But still you can see a difference. So when you run a Monte Carlo simulation with a biased fission source, so for instance with the um, source of uh, only 10 neutrons like here, the bias from the source will also propagate into all the results. So the power distribution that you calculate will also have this shape and also the multiplication factor that you calculate will be affected. Why? because there will be fewer fission neutrons in the center, there will be more fission neutrons close to the boundary of the system. So there will be more neutrons leaking out of the system, which means that the multiplication factor will be calculated smaller than the correct one. In the correct case, when the, the fission source is sampled by the correct fundamental mode, we can see that there are many more fission neutrons in the center. Those are not very likely to leak out from the system, so they are likely to create new fission neutrons around the center. And the multiplication factor, therefore, is higher. Right? If you use the biased fission source, like this one, the neutrons are more likely to leak out of the system, so there will be fewer fission neutrons in the next generation, so the multiplication factor is smaller. Here we can see the plot of the computed multiplication factor for the different cases. So when we use a large number of neutrons per cycle, 10,000, we obtain the multiplication factor uh, close to 0.98 so it converges at this uh, value however if we use a very small number of neutrons per cycle only 10 we can see there is this systematic error it's a bias 
it will never converge to the correct uh, eigenvalue of the system. It will always remain biased. You can see that on this horizontal axis we have the total number of simulated neutron histories. So all these results are obtained with the same statistics. We use the same number of neutrons to calculate these values. There is a systematic bias. So this can possibly create a risk for us in safety calculations when we calculate the multiplication factor for a reactor we could uh, calculate that the reactor is uh, subcritical when in fact it is supercritical and we would obtain such a result simply because the batch size would be too small and it would bias the efficient source and the multiplication factor. So let me just summarize some of the important results. Uh, we have find out that the bias in the fission source is uh, reflected also into a bias in the k eigenvalue or the multiplication factor of the system. The bias in the multiplication factor is of the same order as the bias in the fission source. It's of the order 1 over m. So if you increase the number of neutrons per cycle 10 times, you will reduce the bias in the multipli multiplication factor 10 times as well. The bias source is usually flatter. The bias flattens the fission source. And because of this, uh, the leak of the neutrons from the system increases and this reduces the uh, value of the calculated multiplication factor. So the biased multiplication factor is computed smaller than the correct value is. And this creates a risk of the underestimating of the calculated uh, multiplication factor or the reactivity of the system. So that's an important safety issue. So in our Monte Carlo criticality simulations we want to make sure that there is no bias or very little bias in the efficient source and all the results. So in order to make sure that the bias is small we have to use a sufficiently large number of neutron histories per one cycle. So for common systems, large nuclear reactors, uh, we recommend to use at least 500 to 1000 neutrons per cycle. However, these values are nowadays considered quite small and it's very common to see a much larger number of neutrons simulated at every cycle. Uh, very common uh, batch sizes are around 10,000, 50,000 or 100,000 neutrons. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.